Hi, Jeannie. Hi. <laughs> how, are you, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm loving the red on you. You look great. I'm loving green on you. Money, money, money. Yes, yes. <laughs> so welcome everyone to It's All About the Benjamins Financial Literacy Series. My name is Janella Swift. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams NYC in New York City. Today's episode is called Credit Rules Everything Around Me, Cream. And we are talking with Jeannie Kelly, the credit coach. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, thanks for having me today, Jamila. Yes, yes. So Jeannie, tell us, how did you get started in credit repair? I got started because I had bad credit. And, uh, you know, so we're going back 20 years ago when I was going through a divorce, single mom, and um, I really, no college education. I was waitressing and I couldn't even get an apartment in my own name. It was really, my credit was shot. Mm -hmm. So I was going for help trying to find solutions and I realized no one knew what they were talking about. So I had to learn the hard way, but then after learning how to build healthier credit, I said, you know, this is what I'm going to do and help others. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone wanted to actually, since there's so many Americans right now who are unemployed, if they wanted to go into this field as a means of just getting some extra income, could they contact you or are there any other Absolutely. I would love that. Yeah, definitely. Just go to my website or go on social media, the Instagram Jeannie Kelly credit and reach out to me. Would okay. love that. Sounds good. So now with at least... The last number I heard, there are about 26 million Americans that have been either furloughed or their job has been terminated. Now, what can they do right now in this climate, you know, we're in the midst of a pandemic, what could they do to protect their credit? Well, definitely my number one rule is to be aware of what's being reported about you. So number one, look at your credit reports. And you can do this for free at annualcreditreport.com. Yes. So you could do this for free. And the big news because of the crisis that we're in, usually you can pull your credit once a year for free at that website. But now for this year, they're going to allow you to pull it every single week if you wanted to, to check on things for free. It doesn't hurt your score for you to pull your own credit. So that's the number one way to start. See what's on your credit report and what is being reported, you know, from your creditors about you. Mm -hmm. Now, what about PPP? Is there anything that I've, I've done my research on it? I'm a small business owner, ind independent contractor, and I'm getting a lot of conflicting information. Is there anything that you found out yourself about that, that about the personal, um, the pay, paycheck protection program? I feel like you, there's a lot of information out there. So I'm all about the credit and focused on that. And I want to have information to give you, but I can't even figure it out myself. I think you have to go to an accountant and really see if they even know, because I think things keep changing of, you know, how you're getting it, what you would have to pay back. So the bottom line is think of it as a loan and don't, you know, if you do not need it, don't apply for it or don't accept it. So really read the fine print and really do your research on it. Right. I mean, one thing that I did find out is that if you do receive the money, in order to um, have the loan forgiven, you have to have a separate bank account so that you can account for all of the money that you spent and prove that you did, you know, you didn't go on a vacation or you actually did spend the money on your business and you did pay yourself and your employees. So now, what That's is a good tip? What advice would you give couples? I mean, everyone, it's, we're, we're on week eight right now. There are a lot of people who are together that want to be together and will come out of this, you know, still loving each other. But then there are others who are looking at their mate like, oh my God, I can't wait to get away from you. And yes, let's, let's carry out this divorce. Now, what could people do to protect themselves, you know, to, to protect their credit before and after a divorce? 
That's a great question because it is true. That may, might have all of your information as well. So you want to make sure no one's applying for credit in your name without you knowing and all that. You know, it can happen. So again, one website is for free to be checking your credit. But also, um, I always say, and maybe you'll put the link down below, but going to my website, I talk about protecting your identity with a service because I feel like our information is out there all over. We've given it, even not to just our mate. So you want to protect your credit and your identity no matter what, especially before a divorce, during the process. I can't tell you how many clients I have helped that they thought that the divorce was going smooth until they looked at their credit report. And then they realized, oh, I thought some of these bills were being paid like they were supposed to, and they were not being paid or not even being paid on time. So definitely looking at the credit report and being aware during that process is key. Well, you know, this brings to mind, let's say if someone meets someone, they meet the love of their life, and the man or the woman has perfect credit. And then their mate, it turns out, their credit is an abomination. Now, it is well known that once you marry someone, you do inherit, you're responsible for that person's credit. Is that true or not? Well, no, I mean, your credit won't be merged with theirs. Okay. So you're, it's not like all of a sudden you get married. Your social belongs to you. So right. a lot of times people do think, oh, if I get married, our reports will merge. That's not true at all, but your accounts that you choose to jointly have together will go on that credit report. So any credit cards that you say, oh, let's open this credit card together, or let me add you on a jointly, those would be on, or a mortgage would be on jointly. I have noticed that a lot of people are not doing joint accounts anymore. They're staying more independent and not financially weaved like that. And I, I do think if you want to, and not saying, oh, I'm so in love, let me pre-think a divorce. I'm not saying not to do that, but like putting someone on as an authorized user, they could still use that card, but at any time you could take them off. So that's a lot easier as far as your credit goes. So of course a mortgage, Usually you might need two incomes for that mortgage so that you would be on jointly, but otherwise your credit is not all of a sudden merged with um, whoever you marry, you know, or a business partner. Think about that. But the accounts that you jointly are responsible for, then those, yes. Okay. See, I always had the impression that if you marry someone that has, you know, $100,000 worth of credit card debt, then I would be on, you know, the hook for, for paying that if they defaulted. Is that, is that the case? Again, during, okay, you wouldn't be by the bank on default because the bank can't go after you if your name wasn't on it. But a, a divorce attorney can answer that if like you, like during your marriage, what you'll be financially responsible for, that is different. Like what debt you jointly or didn't jointly get, that's divorce questions. But as far as your credit goes, and as far as that creditor, they can't come after you if you did not sign that document and you're not responsible. Definitely not. I'm having another, uh, interview this week with someone on financial intimacy and mm. knowing yourself and your mate and the relationship that you have with money. So I always thought a good idea when you meet someone would be, and you're, you're serious and you're about to um, become committed to each other. I always thought that it would be a good idea to both sit down and talk about your finances and your credit, to look at your credit report. Do you think, would you advise your clients to do something like that so that they know exactly what they're getting? Yeah, at? because, you know, first of all, and it is okay, let's say someone, one of the partners has bad credit. And if you have great credit, maybe that's just something they didn't pay attention to and now you can teach them. Right. But when you're in the honeymoon phase, the beginning of a relationship where it's getting serious, a lot of people will say, oh, look at it. Um, I know how much money this person makes. They told me, I see where they live. But, you know, all of that is smoke and mirrors. Let's look at the credit report. Yeah. Let's see what's, because, you know, there could be a lot of debt on there. And again, it's not saying 
no, don't go for that person, but put a plan together and you can't hide from that credit report information. So if, you know, you'll know all about the accounts and the balances that are due. And it's, we know that a lot of causes of divorce are financial reasons. Right. So if we can, in the beginning, let's make this a healthy relationship about finances, then if you're used to doing that and you do a quarterly check-in or six month check-in to talk about what, you know, what are our financial goals? What are we paying off for debt? What are we saving? What vacations? I mean, it's so healthy if you can do it. And in the beginning of a relationship, you know, make it a habit. And then if you know that, hey, let's pull our credit. It's our six month check-in. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So that'd be great. Yes. Oh, so what would you say um, is the best thing to do to build someone's credit? So starting off to build, you might need a secured credit card. If you have no credit at all, you might need that because it does take time to have someone like want to lend you money. Well, where's the, there's no report about you yet. So a secured credit card is a great way to go. And then it does take six months to get a credit score from FICO on one new account. So it might go on your credit report within two to three, you know, 60 days, but it's gonna take time to get that score. So you wanna plan ahead. And then from the secured card, if you pay on time, keep those balances low, and then go for a store card, and then keep building. And again, then don't forget about that store card five years later and say, oh, I, I, I can close that because I'll just use my major credit card now. No, you want to keep all those accounts because they have the length and history. Mm -hmm. So don't forget who helped you out in the beginning, basically, on your credit report. Keep those accounts open and active. Right, right. That's good to know. So what is the highest score that someone could get? Is the range from like 300 to is it 800 or 900 it's for, so i care about your fico score i always say that's my four letter favorite four letter f word because 90 <laughs> percent of lenders look at that scoring model so i don't care about there's thousands of scores out there i don't care about them because if no one's going to loan me money against those scores then why do i care so fico goes from 300 to 850 Mm -hmm. So that's the FICO scoring model. So, and once you're really like 740, 760, it's like getting an A plus on your credit, on your um, report card. So once you're there, you're at, I mean, of course, a lot of people when they're there, they're like, I want to make it into the 800s. And that's great. But I'm just saying, as far as lending, you'll get the lowest rates that are available because you're at like that A plus level. Right. So, you know, when I, um, when I graduated from college, um, yeah, the, the experience that most college students have is that they arrive on campus and then the credit card companies, they swoop down on them and, oh, you can have, you know, unlimited credit to charge up. And I did that and I ended up graduating with a, a judgment on my credit report. Now, fortunately for me, I, I, I think I went into collections and, and um, settled everything. Now, would you suggest that someone settles and goes into collections or would you, what would, would be the best way to handle a situation like that? Yeah, so that's hard because you're right off the gate, you know, having that public record, the judgment or the collection. So it's hard to answer it generally because I would want it paid. It's just how to pay it, when to pay it. Right. So when it comes to FICO scores, just to give you the secret formula, or not the secret, that it's just the formula that everyone should know about, 35% is your payment history. Mm -hmm. So having something like that would drag that part of the score down. 30% is balances. And this is where it could get unique because if it's still with the, the original creditor, paying that off could still help the score because it's zeroing out the balance. But uh, so that's 30% of the score. Then 15% length of credit, how long you've been using it, 10% types of credit, mm -hmm. you know, having credit cards, installment, student loans, and then 10%, um, what did I say? New credit. So FICO, and that's like a love-hate relationship because we, FICO likes to see new credit, but not in the moment because it'll first dip your score with the new account hitting the report and the inquiry. 
but a couple of months down the road, then it's good. So not like right before going house shopping, do you want to go and get, you know, um, the new furniture for the house? Let's wait, get the mortgage. So with that question, it, I mean, yes, you do want it paid because you don't want further collection activity. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, you would want to try to stop the judgment, you know, stop the public record. But I will say, Public records, except for bankruptcies, public records right now are not reporting on your credit report. Okay. So a few years ago, yes, you would see the judgments and the tax liens. Those aren't on your credit report with your included in your FICO score. Only the bankruptcy would be. So all of that is not that you can hide from it because the banks for a major purchase, they're going to pull public records as well. But it's the good news is it's not calculated in your lending score, the FICO score. So that is good news. So having it paid would probably be necessary for the mortgage, you know, and, and also just like I say, time heals all wounds and it does with your credit as well. So it's better to have it paid. And then even if it's negative on your report, you can still have negative items and be rebuilding your credit. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not be an 800 score, but you can rebuild. It's better than leaving it and ignoring it and keep getting the phone calls or have the judgment notice on your door, which, you know, if you can pay it, then I would resolve it. I, I will say, I'm very proud to say that my credit is very stellar now. Um, I, I finally got to a point where, you know, I had a, a credit card where the limit was about $4,000. And, you know, there was a time where, where I was going over the limit. I, I remember having a balance of about 4100 but then I made the determination to start paying down, you know, in chunks. And now my limit is below, I would say it's probably around 1800 So right. what they've done is they've increased the limit to, to 8000 And I just said, nope, I'm not getting caught up in this trap. I leave the card home. I don't even touch the card. And, you know, it's just good. I'm just keeping it. I don't want to actually pay it off immediately. I'm just using it as a means of just improving my credit score. And just, you never know what could happen. You know, it's good to just, you know. Yeah, I always say a lot of people will be like, oh, cash is king. You know, you hear about that all the time. Yeah, but if you're only using cash and there's no history of you on a credit report, when you do need that mortgage, how do you think you're going to get 300,000 or 500,000 from a bank? So think of the credit cards, cards as tools mm -hmm. and use them in a healthy way. Use them for the rewards. Use them, you know, to build that history. And when you can lower that balance as much as you can, but keep the card open and keep it at home if you need to, you know, <laughs> that's fine. I've been there myself. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but it's, it is rewarding when you finally get to a point where like, oh, okay, it, I see an improvement. My, my score is definitely, it's, raising, it's rising. Now, what about someone who has collections or judgments or even bankruptcies on their credit report? Is there a certain amount of time where it's expunged from your, your, your record, your report? Yeah, so, uh, you know, any negative item as collections or late payments can stay on the report up to seven years. Right. The bankruptcy, the accounts included in bankruptcy can stay on for seven years, but the bankruptcy can stay on for 10 years. But like I said, don't get discouraged. A lot of people I have helped, uh, they'll say, I can't even look at my report. I haven't looked at it in years. And here they're walking around with this guilt. And number one, sometimes it's not even that bad. And also number two, you're walking around without putting a plan together to resolve things. It doesn't, if you do nothing, sometimes that credit score can stay down because you're not doing anything. You need to start re-adding healthy new accounts, paying those things on time. And then let's put a plan together regarding the open collections. How are we going to resolve those? And, you know, you do not have to live with bad credit. We, again, if you don't have any money, then, you know, that's when our score is damaged because maybe we can't pay those collections. But you know what? It's damaged. So we're not getting more in more trouble, getting more credit at the same time. So, you know, there we have to, you know, live with that bad score for a little bit and put a plan together and definitely rebuild. Now, what about, I've read 
cases where parents take out credit in their children's names, like their toddlers walking around with cell phone bills in their name, and they don't know this. So what would you suggest for that person that finds out it's time for them to apply for, you know, student loans, but they have collections and, you know, judgments on their report, but they never took out anything. What would you suggest that they do? First of all, that is so, so horrible because it's family fraud. Yes. And so it's really hard. So it, that's a case by case, like, because if they go to the police or if they go to those lenders to say, do the research and then it comes back, if there are outstanding collections and money due, they're going to, it could be criminal charges, you know? So it is a very hard, it's not a general thing that I can say, except you have to get guidance and do know, you know, how do you handle it? You know, are you going to go after the person that did this? And, you know, you do have to get the credit back in your name only. And, you know, that's why it is horrible. Any, anybody who does that, it's just so sad. I can't even believe it happens. But, you know, what do you do? Do you have to file a police report? You might have to. But uh, that's a case by case, very touchy subject because you really have to make those decisions and again you want to lock your credit that's one thing you would definitely want to do because that person does have this information about you if they were like you're saying the parent so you could freeze your credit and this way you'll set up a pin number and only you would know that pin don't you know bad enough if they know your social and all the other your date of birth it's your parent but if you have a pin number then it's frozen so moving forward nothing else can be added from that point on but again then there's resolving all the old history and it's a hard it's a horrible situation to be in and that's why i always say protect your identity you really have to do that and again, as a kid, you shouldn't be thinking about it, but all of us should be doing it. And then moving forward, that person definitely would want to be doing it besides, besides the credit freeze, you know, protect your identity. You, you mentioned that you've met people or you've had clients that really just put their head in the sand concerning what their credit score is. They haven't checked their credit reports at all. I've learned that that could be somewhat detrimental because I, I remember maybe about five years ago, I went to file my taxes and I learned that someone filed a tax return in my name. I don't know how they were able to gain access to my social security number, but they received an $1,800 refund from the state. And I think that they were waiting to receive money from the feds as well. So when I went to submit my, um, my documents, they said, oh, well, you just received a refund. And I was just like, what? I never, ever, ever get a refund. I'm self-employed. <laughs> so ever since then, the way it has been resolved is I've received PIN numbers every year from the IRS. So yeah. yes. Yeah, that's a great, yeah, definitely. And again, our information is out there. That's why I'm always talking about, it's not only just protecting, and that's why I said the credit freeze. Yeah, that's great. It, but there's more to your identity than just your credit. You know, like you're saying, your social security for your tax purposes or your uh, medical card information. One of the worst cases I had to help was on the Today Show. One of the... Um, the victims was because someone stole their insurance card number and their driver's license number. So they were pretending to be that person getting medical help. So getting operations and she owed so much money and it was not her. And so clearing up that, it, it took this woman, it took her years and she still couldn't do it. And that's why I got involved. And then you know, it's, it is, it takes hundreds of hours. And that's why I always say, at least if you have protection on all of your information, if you have a problem, then you can just have someone else, you know, repairing your identity. You know, it's worth it. To me, it's worth every penny. I would think so too, because that sounds like a nightmare, you know, yeah. to find out that medical bills are in your name and you, you were never even sick. That's right. It's, it's, you know, it gets me so mad because it's like, you know, in the court of law, you're innocent until proven guilty. 
but not on your credit report. You know, that woman had these items on her report and she had to prove her innocence. So it was damaging her. She couldn't, her husband was getting the mortgage in his name and she was living this way for years, not being able to, and she was blessed. She did have someone who could do that. Could you imagine if she was single? So she had that blessing, but it was not fair at all. And it was horrible. I'm glad I was able to help her. But then, you know, it led into this whole world of that we really need, to, our information is out there. We don't know how, when we give it to a doctor's office or a school or wherever, we know we've given it. It's not, you know, so we, now we have to protect it as best as we can. And even with the protection, if it happens, you want to have the help. That's all. So tell us again, how would the viewers get in touch with you if they're in need of your services? So they can go to my website, JeannieKelly.net. And of course, I'm on Instagram a lot, Jeannie Kelly Credit. And so that's how they can find me and reach out. And if they, now you mentioned also, let's just say this again, if someone wants to start a career and maybe pick up some part-time work, they would be able to contact you as well? Absolutely, yeah. And that's in the credit business and also with the ID protection business. You know, that's something definitely, I'm always looking, always happy to, you know, build a team. Great. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Jeannie. I appreciate you so much for participating in this series. Once again, it's Jeannie Kelly, the credit coach, right? And I'll, ha I'll make sure all of your contact info is below in the, the uh, description box. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me. Can't wait to do this again. Yes, I'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.